So today we're going to be getting started on an A20-3476 board that doesn't turn on. As can be seen here on my power supply, where it's only drawing 0.02 amps, and there's no fan spin. So we have to find and figure out why there's no fan spin on this board that was picked at random. So we already know that we have a PP3V42 because we're getting a light in the charger. So that rail we don't have to check. We're going to go through and check every other rail one by one. And the first rail that we're going to check here is our PP bus. Let's see if PP bus G3 hot is G3 hot. So first thing to do is check right here on R7005. And let's see what we get. We get a PP bus, 12.59 volts. Next, PPVRTC underscore G3 hot. Let's see if that's present. Three point three volts. Next rail. PP five ES five. Someone said too many Pauls. Would work for you, but my hand is like a vibrator. That's not what I'm looking for. Maybe in my personal life, but definitely not in my work life. PP five ES five is measuring back and forth, back and forth. Interesting. Five volts. 1 volt, 5 volts, back to 1 volt, back up to 5 volts. All right, so there's something going on in that area. Let's take a look at what chipset's going to create PP5ES5. It appears to come out of U7501. Let's scroll down to U7501 and take a look at what's going on in this area. U7501 is responsible for three things. The first thing it's responsible for is the creation of PP5ES4. The second thing it's responsible for is the creation of PP5ES5. See, V out. The third thing it's responsible for is the creation of PP3V3S5. Let's see if any of the rails along that line are shorted to ground. And let's also take a look at what the board looks like along that area. I'm going to scroll over my microscope camera over here and bring it over to that section of the board. All right, let's see what we have here. And as we can see, we have a poorly soldered chip and some flux residue in the area. You can see that there's poor soldering because while some of these joints uh, have, you know, these nice little slopes to them, on the other side, they don't. So let's look at the chip from the side. See this? This is flat. So this here is a joint. Let's zoom. So this here is a joint on the third pin. This crap over here is not. That's garbage. Now, improper soldering could be causing this, but before I do any of that, I'd like to see if there's any sort of short to ground. You could also tell that not enough flux was used because this part over here is sticking up. So you see how the solder is kind of sticking up over here? That means all the flux inside of that solder had been burned away, which is why you get this cruddy looking joint over here. See how I can just kind of chip away at this excess? And the reason that's there is because whoever was doing this job did not use enough flux. Remember the adage that Paul S. likes to say, the bigger the gob, the better the job. This way, you won't wind up with shitty solder joints like this one over here, which were clearly caused by somebody not using the proper amount of flux. So first thing we're going to do, First thing we're going to do is use the proper amount of flux. No! Before we even get to that, we're going to see if there's a short circuit to ground on any of these rails. First rail we're going to check for is PP5VS5. Twenty-one kilo ohms to ground. That rail can be jumping even if it's not shorted if this chip over here, which creates that rail along with the others, is messed up. So this chip is creating PP3V3S5, PP5VS4, and PP3V3S5. Now let's take a look at PP3V3S5 and see if that's shorted to ground. Because if any one of those are shorted to ground, it can cause this funky power cycling that we're seeing here. Twelve kilo ohms. Next up is PP5VS4.
There's a big pile of stuff under there. Hey, Seth. Yeah, I know. We gotta check this. The label says eBay. Where do you think we came from? PP5 ES4 has a 0 0.4 ohm short to ground, which means that's where we need to be looking. So we have to inject some voltage into that rail and see what gets hot. But first thing I'm going to do before I even do that is I'm going to remove this chip that was clearly soldered with the incorrect amount of flux. Remember, folks, the bigger the gob, the better the job. Now, most likely, somebody started messing with this chip because they saw that PP5 ES4 was missing, so they thought, power rail missing, me replace chip that create power rail. Me not try to figure out what's actually wrong. Me no care what actual problem is. Me no use brain. Me replace chip. And then me send to Lewis. And then me de de decline Lewis repair quote. That's most likely how this usually goes, which is why we don't accept do-it-yourself jobs. However, I'm going to take this chip off because I don't know how much heat was applied to it. Usually I'd say the chip is fine. There's no need to mess with it. We just have to resolve the short on PP5 ES4. But I don't know how much heat was used while soldering this chip, and I don't feel like a chip going back on the board that has a chance of failing again because it was touched by a buffoon. It's not good for business. So as you can see, the short is still there. Ahem. Ahem. As you can see, the short circuit on PP5 ES4 is still there because it was never the chip that fault to begin with. So why somebody started screwing with that, rather than using their brain and simply measuring for shorts, is beyond me. But, what are you going to do? Maybe once I have a million subscribers, people will start watching this stuff and learning before raping their MacBook. You know one thing that I've been thinking about recently, and... It, it's people in the chat, tell me if I get any facts wrong here, because I don't remember everything. But there was this subway case I, I was told about where they got in trouble for calling it a $5 foot long since it, somebody measured it and saw that it was like 10 or 11 inches and not a foot. So they were saying false advertising. I'm kind of thinking of doing something similar with Apple. So I've had this series going, shit, or things geniuses say. And a lot of the times they tell you, you got to replace everything when in reality it's a card, it's a cable, it's a pin or whatever. And they're saying you have to replace everything. Now, I don't think that that's fraud because a lot of people have been saying it's fraud and they're clearly misrepresenting what they're doing and they're purposely screwing people over. I don't think that's what it is. You know, a lot of people have said maybe they just don't know any better. But where the fraud comes in, in my opinion, is when people say that they are geniuses. Because when I Google, genius is defined as an IQ of 145 and above. So you're calling them the genius bar and you're calling them geniuses. But my question is, have you, is, the, is an IQ test part of your internal standards prior to hiring people that you are advertising to the public as geniuses? Because if everybody at the genius bar has an IQ of above 145, that's cool. But if the people at the Genius Bar do not have an IQ of 145 or above, that is misrepresentation, false advertising, and that, I think, actually has a case for fraud. But it's just something that's been kind of going around in my head. You, you, you tell me what you think of that. Anyway, uh, we're just going to go back and find out where it is that I can place PP5VS a wire for PP5VS4. So we can find that short circuit and... Uh, you know, go back to having a happy little board. So I c this, there's a nice big honking capacitor up here. And I'm going to solder a wire to that. Mark, what do you think of my Genius Bar suit idea? Because everybody in that Reddit thread was saying this is fraud. You know, they shouldn't be, uh, they they shouldn't be telling people they need repairs they didn't. And somebody made a good argument. They have to, it has to be willful misrepresentation, or you, know, you have to know that what you're doing is wrong. And they probably don't know what the actual fault is. Well, so it's not fraud. But if you're calling somebody a genius when they don't have an IQ of 145, I think that there's a case to be made that that's fraud. Less than average intelligence bar. <laughs> Or less, or not, you know, just like moderate IQ of 1 to 120 bar. What's wrong with that?
Like, it would be one thing if they actually had Mensa people working there and they called it a genius bar. But they're not geniuses. There's nothing about them that's genius. It's a lie. It's a dirty, dirty lie. Like with Geek Squad, you could say that they are geeks. Because geek is a subjective term. Genius is not. Let's get the thermal camera on the desk. I don't want to use my face. As you guys know, I just recently turned 30, so it's, it's really all downhill from here. You thought I was ugly before. See me come back in a few years. There's nothing worse than being over 30. There's nothing worse than being over 30. Do you smell that short, Mark? Gee, I wonder what it is. Wow, 195 Celsius. And this is a cracked capacitor. So there's a couple of signs here that you can tell, that make it obvious that this is the bad capacitor. The primary sign here that I think you can all see is that it's cracked along the upper left corner. See that when I zoom in a little bit? Man, that is one nasty capacitor. Is it just me, or are more cracks forming in that? Uh. Yeah, that cap looks really mad. Oh. Mark, check it out. Paul, check it out. Come here. <laughs> You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Oh, here we go. Fuel log. Damn it. You missed it. <laughs> that, that was so cool. Short is gone. All right, we can put this back together and give it back to the customer now, right? It's those moments that make me happy that I got a job that doesn't require college. I get to blow shit up and make money. How does that happen, says Nasera? That happens because it's a Mac. Now we're going to fix that section of the board by adding the proper amount of flux. Side Ducky 101 says my cum is less than that. Well, clearly you're dating the wrong person. We have the proper amount of flux on the board. Beautiful. Now we just tin the pads for that little capacitor. Okay. 
Did you turn off power? Of course I did. I'm not going to solder on a board that has power going through it. I don't have Alzheimer's. All right. Let's get ourselves a new capacitor and a new TPS Now back to our TPS 51980 area, where somebody improperly soldered on or tried to mess with the TPS 51980 chip that was most likely fine. This has 4K at 60 hertz now. I changed the cable. 4K at 30 before. The chip snaps into place. So now we take the iron away, wait for it to cool off. Now we push down on the center of it once it's in place, and now it's going to be nice and close to the board. Then we, and we put the proper amount of flux for cleaning up the, around the board. All right. We're going to, uh, we're going to remove my soldered wire from the power supply. I'm 4K at 59 hertz. 59 hertz? Yeah. Yours just has to be one hertz better. Huh? What a piece of shit. Okay, so now we're going to see if this works. So we have, we fixed the PP5ES4 circuit, we undid the poor soldering, and we taught the lesson that the bigger the gob, the better the job. No. That being said, let's see if it turns on. We're going to take this MagSafe, plug it into this MacBook, turn on the power supply, turn on the power supply, We went from 0 0.02 amp usage to 0 amp usage. Wait, eh? Oh, never mind. So my MagSafe is so burned that you have to jiggle it in order to get it to work. So see, we're using 0.4 amps now. The fan is spinning, and this MacBook now works. So that is how you clear a short. That's how you replace a QFN. I mean, that's how much flux you're supposed to use while soldering on a MacBook. That's it for today. And as always... I hope you learned something. What did we learn today? We learned how to find a short circuit by injecting voltage. We learned that if a chip creates multiple power rails, rather than blame the chip if one of those power rails is going up and down, check for a short to ground on every rail it's responsible for. That chip creates two 5-volt rails and one 3-volt rail. And if even one of them is short to ground, all of them will stop working. PP3V3S5 and PP5V... S5 were both jumping, even though they had no short to ground because PP5ES4 was jumping. And PP5ES4 was jumping because it had a short to ground. Now we have a beautiful working board. I have a document that I link to below if you'd like to learn any of this stuff or you could watch any of the other playlists. And at this point, we're just going to go back to going through our statuses and fixing boards.